Hello, and welcome back to Roll for Solidarity, Uplifting Black and Asian Creatives in TTRPGs, our three-day stream extravaganza. Um, we are in the middle of day two, and uh, got to give shout-outs to Transplanner RPG and TTRP Gifts for organizing this whole event. 43 creators of color, seven panels, three one-shots, we're raising money for two charities, a fresh food and mental health fund in Buffalo, New York, and an organization that empowers young women, young Asian women in Boston. So uh, if you're inclined, if you are able to, uh, help us reach our donation goal of $5,000. Use exclamation mark donate in chat or go to kofi.com slash transplaner RPG. Of course. Do it, cowards. Do it. <laughs> We have our donation incentives. We, of course, like to recognize their awesome community for tuning in and, um, you know, being as generous as they are. Um, so we have uh, a bunch of donation milestones that will unlock some rewards and giveaways for the chat at 10%. We have an Electrum chest from Idol Champions for everyone, 25%. We have uh, the first of uh, three $20 gift cards to Die Hard Dice at 50%, a Monsters of the Multiverse code for Roll20 at 60%, Ooh. another $20 gift card from Die Hard Dice for those clackety clacks, math rocks, 70%, another Monsters of the Multiverse code for Roll20. Uh, at 80%, everybody gets three gold chests from Idol Champions. Yay! At 90%, the last of our $20 gift cards gets unlocked for Die Hard Dice. And when we reach the goal, the $5,000, we get a, um, a, we unlock the final code for uh, Monsters of the Multiverse on Roll20. And for every um donation of two hundred dollars or more you can uh get a free battle map con commission from possum punks on twitter which is awesome i didn't uh, know about that that's, that's cool. i saw that earlier today they make really good yeah things. i just found out about that today it is awesome we are currently at 26 percent uh you know what Let's try to get it up to 30% by 4%. the end of this panel. Heck yeah. That's math. Yeah, let's math, let's math. let's if you give go. me the number, I can let's give you exact number. Do it. Um math so is fun, everyone. Let's do it. We you know, if you are inclined, exclamation mark, donate in chat. So here we go. Uh I would like to welcome everybody to this panel. Um, I decided to call it making it personal because the art of storytelling, as much as we are creating and making things up, there's always going to be a piece of ourselves that we put into it. And everything about us, our culture, our identity, it is going to influence the stories we want to tell. And it's going to influence our personal voice. And I have invited three excellent storytellers and TTRPG creatives to have this lovely discussion with me. And uh, I will have them introduce themselves, starting with Kappa. Uh, oh, yes, I'm going first. Hello, <laughs> my name is Christian. Uh, I am best known as Kappa in most online spaces. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. And I am really glad to be on this panel because I write, I create stories, I create worlds, I world build and create lots of characters. And this is something that's really important to me, putting in and trying to represent parts of my own identity and also uh, uh, try, and, try and shed a light on more marginalized communities as well and make sure that we are accurately representing the folks uh, that we see in our day-to-day -day lives um but yeah that's me hello someone take it away and puja next 
Hey, everybody. I am Pooja. You probably have seen me being a menace on Twitter at Pooja. <laughs> and uh, I'm Pujabarwaki in most other places because uh, I wasn't an early adopter to everything. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm very excited to be here because, um, yes, I am Indian American and tend to put that voice in my writing, in the characters that I play, but I'm also just one person from a country with a population of a billion people. And that's it's always very interesting in terms of like, what kind of different bits of Indian culture can I represent well? Can I showcase well? It's, you know, it's, no one's a monolith, but especially a country with that big a population of people. So I'm excited to have that conversation with everyone here today. Absolutely. And last but not least, Theta. Hi, I'm Theta. I use they, them pronouns. You can find me on Twitter at Jobutapaki. I also, uh, itch.io. I, I know. Thank you. I, I went that for that so fast. Um, mm -hmm. I make and write games. Uh, I am incredibly, like, ethnically, I'm mixed. So, and it's just a whole bunch of things. So it's always, I like talking about how how we tell these stories because as a mixed person there's always a question of like well how much do you have the right to tell the story sometimes even more so when you're diasporic so it's always a thing that kind of sits there in the back of my mind like these are my stories but how much sometimes uh, yeah it's the question of are they really your stories you know um which is a very relatable sentiment and, you know, part of the reason I wanted to uh, lead this discussion. Um, but to start it off, I would like to go around the table and hear about each of your kind of, we'll call it storyteller origin stories. And this time I will go backwards and start with Theta. <laughs> uh um honestly i think i've always kind of liked stories um my mom is my both my parents come from a slightly artsy background so there was a lot of like movies and books and everything that came with that as a kid and then i got into like childhood and then later childhood and i was like i loved reading and i always was like well how can we use those stories and how can we tell them and so i just got older and I continued like telling stories even as I went into a field that isn't a particularly storytelling field but I think it matters to the field because stories change the narratives on how we discuss things and it changes the words on how we discuss things and I think it was very important to talking about how we do things uh I guess that's not really an origin story um sorry <laughs> I mean look it's it's your it's it's, you it's, <laughs> it's your yeah. beginning it's I write. Where, it's it's where you you know it's where storytelling started becoming important for you i consider it an origin story you know yeah. it counts Yay. i'm the one who assigns the assignment and i say <laughs> you understand the assignment gold star from the teacher <laughs> don't 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 shortchange yourself um uh, yeah, Kappa, what about you? What is your storyteller origin? Uh, so I've been doing uh, like storytelling for a long time, whether it's uh, I, I, I grew up in, in a very religious background and like reading stories from books and stuff to younger cousins, my younger sister, all that stuff. And um, I don't know when I when I got older, like middle school, high school, I just, you know, everyone kind of drifts into reading fan fiction and maybe even starting to write fan fiction i never got into writing fan fiction i was so close it was like right there um but uh back in the tumblr days there there was there you know there was a lot of rp groups right so role play groups oh no. uh mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess that was the, like where, where I first started, like actually writing stories and really, uh, honing in the characterization in my, in narratives and stuff. So, um, I guess that, that like that to me is where I can definitely say that's where I started 
telling a story instead of it crafting a story like um, out of my brain onto the computer or onto a piece of paper onto something for other people to consume uh and then that just sort of bloomed and evolved into um you know radio shows into um eventually ttrpgs and now i'm doing so much more of that uh i i, I still feel like i'm at the beginning of it but i'm always considering um what sort what i'm putting in um and and what is important to be represented in all of the stuff that i create and all of the stuff that i write because it's a lot of characters i do a lot of character work um mm. less so much narratives and prose and, and world building though i still dabble in that but yeah that's that that's where i'm at excellent and puja uh we'll skip past the how i got to be a fan of the genres, uh, because that happened when I was very young. But uh, I have a very similar story to Kappa, although... Uh, Did you also guess- do Pokemon RP on Tumblr? I am guessing that I am older <laughs> than you, because uh, my writing RP, like my art, I also started with, uh, but I started with journal-based RPs, so... Live anybody- journal? Uh, Post live journal, it used to be greatest journal, and then greatest oh, journal yeah. died, and then we moved to insane journal. But um, that was where I started writing, doing a lot of writing with friends, and that's when I kind of fell in love with doing character work, doing long term character work. I got to the point where I, a lot of authors talk about that once your characters become real, they start acting independently of your choices. And I got to experience that with some of the characters that I've been playing for a long time. And um, so I already was a fan of storytelling as a hobby, as a creative outlet. And I'm also an incredibly animated, dramatic person. And so the shift of both of those, of storytelling and acting and being just a goof together funneled to be into tabletop and actual play performances. Yeah, I, I've i had similar uh, experiences where I uh, found the internet at a relatively young age, you know? Uh, Yahoo groups and uh, <laughs> AOL Instant Messenger uh, back in the uh, with the early days of my internet life, uh, and I've had similar experiences to Puja where I've uh, joined forums and journal style RPs as well. So that is uh, very relatable. Uh, before I even discovered TTRPGs, so. Um, that's great, which incidentally um, leads into my next discussion point about the medium of TTRPGs and what uh, drew each of you to uh, to them. Um, I mean, Pooja already kind of started going there with TTRPGs, so let's let's hear a little more about that and what made you want to uh express yourself more in the ttrpg space with your gaming sure i was i had always been told that i would really really enjoy tabletop gaming but i never could get a table together uh, personally and so and then the other thing that was happening simultaneously is i was reaching a point of severe burnout in my day job and i was working so much and i had absolutely no creative outlet so i was looking for a creative outlet i was inspired by some of the bigger named actual plays out there where i saw that they were doing things that were more like improv and not just in the comedy sense but in the drama sense and i was just like okay this isn't just about rolling dice at a table and enacting a video game you can actually have real emotional moments the type of character development that i missed from my journal days and so i found some friends who were remotely who were wanting to willing to do it on camera um, not even streamed at the beginning, just somebody who was willing to play with me. And I was immediately drawn to the hobby, like I said, because it it allowed me to do the in-depth examination of characters, backgrounds, and, you know, overarching narrative uh, narratives that could be told as characters evolved, but 
at the same time kept things fresh, um, had a lot of back and forth, which is what I liked in the journal RPs is that because you were always playing with people. So it was a little different than fan fiction because I never knew what was going to happen. And I loved the fact that tabletop with its dice mechanics or what have you would always have that kind of surprise element to it. So you were always on your toes. Great. And uh, how about you, Kappa? Uh, very similar. Uh, like I, I, I find that TTRPGs uh, sit in a very unique space that incorporates so many things that I'm interested in. Uh, Pooja, you said improv and performance and uh, comedy and drama. Like, yes, I love doing that. Like I was, uh, I was a theater kid back in high school um, and, and loved uh, uh, the, the improv games that we did to, to, to feel out performance and acting and all that stuff. Um, I love video games, especially RPGs and statting out a character and playing uh, through an adventure. And so uh, incorporating that into TTRPGs, especially like your more crunchier ones, um, uh, there's, there, there's, you know, they're, they're crunchy, meaning uh, super like statted out and, and lots mm -hmm. of lots of numbers and lots of like um, attributes and things. So I like crafting characters and, and stuff to make them powerful or unique or do a certain thing. I love doing that. And so being able to combine all of that and also like fantasy settings and uh, science fiction settings and all that stuff. So TGRBG sits at this very weird nexus point of all these different interests and all these different uh, uh, hobbies and turn and just makes them like nice and convenient and right there. So why not? Uh, I, 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 avoided ttrpgs for a long time because it's like okay you got to go somewhere you have to do all this prep work and i'm lazy and i love to procrastinate but once i tried it out and was uh was able to run a couple of games i was like this is amazing this is a wonderful place to one not only play with and, and play with friends and join the community but two services all these different um uh, all, all these different itches and all these all, all these different cravings that I have to e explore and um, participate in like performance in math in fantasy and science fiction and then three from there exploring who I am so that that's kind of leading into the the rest of this conversation but that's what keeps me in TTRPG excellent uh Beta what about you um in a similar vein, I mentioned, I did mention this earlier. I had also done Tumblr t uh, role playing because, <laughs> you know, gotta uh, have fun there. Uh, and about the time that started phasing out, um, my I had been hearing throughout high school this is the funniest way to possibly get into TTRPGs for my youth pastor that he had a Wednesday night D&D &D group and he would kick us out of youth group saying, I've got to go play D&D &D now. <laughs> uh, yes. Nice. Yeah, this is this is how I got introduced to TTRPGs. And I thought he was really cool. And I really liked storytelling. Like at that point, I already loved sci-fi and fantasy. I read like Ursula K. Le Guin, all that stuff, like big fan. Uh and so I kind of was like, well, I need something. I like I'm not Tumblr was kind of like eh, at that point. I was like, well, need something to do could check this out this seems like up my alley this seems fun i like video games apparently these are fairly close to like skyrim and dragon age so i should like it um i know it's the other way around i know uh but at the time i didn't know and so <laughs> i started playing and i really and for me it was really fortunate because it was right also when dimension 20 started um, which this was back when I think all three major tables were all white people and excepting for one of them, all of them were also mostly men or so I was like, Hmm, okay. Um, and then D20 came along. I was like, people of color. That's so nice. <laughs> um, so it was like a really good intersection at the time. And I wanted to tell stories about people like me like I always liked tell when I would be doing RPs on Tumblr I loved telling stories of my background and exploring how that would be deconstructed and how we could construct 
these stories and what it meant also in fantasy and sci-fi settings where like Korea doesn't exist so how can you be Korean and I thought that was always a thing I wanted to like explore about and so it just I kind of just fell into it and I really liked all of the comedy I liked the acting I was a big fan of sketch comedy at the time um I liked storytelling I loved the idea of getting to tell communal stories because there's something nice about it's almost like constructing a modern mythology and I really liked that concept no that's absolutely great I mean I I'm listening to the three of you speak and I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I totally can relate. Um, thinking back to my own experiences and getting into uh, TTRPGs myself, you know, it was about meeting new people and like using that as a gateway to um, uh, social interaction. <laughs> and it was TTRPGs and Magic the Gathering, like I in college so I mean uh people often tell me that I'm super awesome and super confident and co like comfortable with people but I'm really not um and so that is how I got into TTRPGs in the first place I did want to bring this particular point to the table because I'm thinking I'd been thinking about it nonstop for weeks since it happened and Theta spoke to it a little bit about like oh how can you be you know Asian if Asia doesn't exist in the you know fiction right how can you make it you know personal and relevant to you and how much of it do you tell and a comment was made at the table someone said to me um you know your character name sounds pretty white and I was like it didn't like it wasn't like it was hurtful or like a call out or anything like it wasn't antagonistic or anything but it did give me something to think about because you know a lot of the games that we play unfortunately have a very kind of eurocentric spin to them you know the default settings tend to favor specific types of narratives um and selfishly i wanted to learn from other people about how they you know make their experiences personal and not default to the um eurocentric conventions of what most games tend to offer so um i'm gonna start with you uh kappa and if you would give me a little bit of insight as to how you uh, approach making your games personal to you and telling yeah. your stories. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, I mean, we, we talked about this in the pre-show a little bit, um, but incorpor it, it, incorporating parts of myself and my culture um, is hard because I grew up like I was born in California, grew up in California in the United States and all that stuff, and very much uh, taught to assimilate into Western culture and this sort of the Americanized um, day to day. Um, so how much of my own experience is actually Filipino or is actually Japanese? Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. I'm Filipino, Japanese. Represent. Um, like how do i take in the japanese kami put that into a into a game when i've never actually uh participated in shintoism you know or or uh i grew up very with very few stories of filipino aswang um and 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 the monsters and 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 um, fairy tales from my my grandpa my grandparents upbringing how much of that can i actually tell and it's it's hard because it's it's something you have to juggle. I try not to make the settings and games that I run set in those the, those specific places, but taking elements of them and introducing them to my players um, in 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 a way that isn't meant to uh, oh this is this is inherently Asian or inherently feel this is just how people exist 
as it should be in real life because that's mm-hmm. just how people exist in real life and when someone comes across a an npc uh and they take off their shoes before entering their house that's something that the players will like will notice that's something that is built into the world but it's not meant to be like oh then that person is asian or that person uh is is from whatever culture it's in a general setting it that's that's just how i try to incorporate things that i know and things that i have experienced um just on the fly if I want to go deeper into that, I take a lot more care and ask and and, and ask around to, to people who are way smarter than me that have <laughs> way more education than me about these things um, and uh, see how to do that respectfully. And these are for these are for just home games for fun games with my friends, but it's, I still want to do uh, do and take that care into it for more published things and more uh, official things like like getting getting cultural cultural consultants is super important because um again we go back into that is this really my story to tell i i can only tell this the story of some uh some dude that grew up in california that has parents from 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 across the pacific ocean like that those are the stories that i am confident and comfortable in telling um other than that i do require uh, i i do feel uh this pressure to be more diligent be take that extra step to make sure i'm doing this respectfully great and how about for you theta i think in the same way i try to take bits of myself and put them into the characters i play um i think that it's sometimes weird you you talk about this like just because you take off your shoes doesn't mean you're asian so at like what point what defines us as being asian is such a tricky thing yeah and especially like as a mixed based person uh my mom's half asian my dad's uh korean and so it becomes a question of like well at what point is are, are we asian at what point are we not at what point like what ties us back there if we've been here for generations and so i think sometimes the only way i can make or play Asian characters is to ensure that part of them is part of me because I know that I'm Asian. So logically, if a character has part of me in it, they're Asian, right? Uh, But similar to like storytelling and the world I build, I try to take things that I know feel familiar to me that have sometimes confused me about American culture and Western culture, I know, because there is like weird little societal expectations, I think, going up in the diaspora, which do hold over. And sometimes I'll be like, confused about little things. And I'll be like, oh, that's a thing people didn't like. Yeah, I'm like, wild. Uh, <laughs> like, I had friends who are like, oh, yeah, cooking. This one's such an inconsequential one, but still the cooking rice in a pot. And I was like, you don't have a rice cooker? You cook it in a pot? No, no, that's so real, Theta. It was such a confusing thing, but there's little things that, like, I find out that my friends will do. I'm like, I didn't know that's a thing people do. That's never a thing my family did. I try to include those because those are things I know feel familiar to me. And I think make the world more, I guess, Asian is not maybe the correct way, but more diverse and more... I don't know another way to put it sometimes besides like home. And then for uh, for monsters, I actually did have the fortune to grow up in a family that still was like, oh, we put up these things to ward away the ghosts as a child. So like that was always that those always are things that I try to bring into because I like having that. And I think it's fun to have cultural superstitions in that way and include those in your stories and how people like do things at least to be polite to whatever is out there and whatever they're believing in and i always love including those in my home games so yeah yeah no like i totally feel that because i think the idea of adding something that's familiar to you that you understand you know separates it from whatever eurocentric default things tend to have a leaning towards so 
I really appreciate that. Um, and how about you, Pooja? So I have, I have kind of a different trajectory here because I grew up in Saudi Arabia until high school, and that's when we moved back to the to the US. And so I grew up going to India a lot. My parents are, you know, first generation expats. But I came to the US having read only basically white characters, having seen only white characters, but even American culture was as foreign, was foreign to me. When you're in Saudi Arabia and you're not from there, that's not your culture. So like, I really just didn't have a culture. And so I defaulted to the one that I was most comfortable with, which was white American culture, because that's what I saw on TV. That's what I read in books. And so, yes, when I started playing out, like every single person in all my RP games had a white face. And so like, I, that's what I ended up playing because I felt like that's the only way to get accepted. And it wasn't until I was in college and I was doing my thesis, which I ended up doing it on, um, religious stories from India that I translated because I, my family is Jane. I'm, I'm not anymore, but, uh, it's a religion that's very, very unexplored. And even though I am not like the most religious person or the most fluent in it, I took, I figured out that if no one, if I don't tell this story, there's not anyone rushing to do it. And so even how Indian I am is good enough. And so I did that for my thesis. It was a wonderful way for me to just connect to the stories that I was told as a kid to make them more accessible to English speaking audiences. And that kind of started this movement for me in my, the characters I play where I'm Indian enough because nobody else is doing it at all. And yes, I can only show you the perspective of somebody who is Gujarati, somebody from a specific, and, and Gujarati grew up in a Jain household, traveled a lot. Like I, I have a very specific perspective, but even that is a perspective that is not there. And so, yeah, because otherwise, if I'm not out here trying to bring in Indian culture into my characters, I realize most people's only exposure to Indian culture in D&D is the horribly mispronounced Rakshas, which isn't even the type of demon that I grew up talking about. So when I saw a Rakshasa in a D&D game, I was like, that, that's a demon from another part of India. So there's just so much that can be told. And for me, it just became a, a thing where I started aggressively, um, I don't really DM much, but I've had wonderful DMs who I love to work with to incorporate monsters that have traits. And, you know, I, I it's, it's been wonderful because most of them are like not Indian. And so I'm happy to work with them because it's important to both me and my DMs to tell stories where we are showcasing other parts of cultures respectfully, even if they, you know, it's not their own. Yeah, no, that those are wonderful insights i personally have a similar experience to puja where you know uh when i started playing ttrpgs uh i grew up in canada so my cultural references were predominantly very non-asian white you know like all of the people i got to play with did not look a thing like me they were all you know white people so you know i started off there and um for me i don't think i quite moved past it in my own experiences so i am trying to work more with like material like the islands of sina una which by the way is my favorite thing to read for fun i have <laughs> not run anything from it yet but i love just curling up um in bed like before I go to bed I just <laughs> read it and it's I you know I read TTRPG books for fun I don't even play them sometimes um with that being said um we've talked a little bit about um you know integrating what makes it personal to you in your games like I feel like being like making your gaming personal, your gaming experience personal and, you know, representing your culture. They're not the same thing. They're not one of the same thing. They're two separate, separate things. And um, 
<laughs> because I've made my my gaming personal to me. Um, I have recently started uh, integrating more Filipino influences. You know, I told a story about you know the white lady based on a Filipino story. Um, you know, in the last uh, you know the kids on bikes game earlier, and I started doing that very recently because my my experience has changed. I've been more. I've spent more time in the Philippines and I've done more things with my life. So like, for me, what I'm wondering from each one of you is where did you get to that point, that intersection between, you know, your culture and, you know, your personal gaming experience? And when did you start to realize that, you know, you had to represent your culture more, I guess. And I'm going to start with Beta here. Okay, yeah. I think I had the fortune to some extent in high school to have a teacher who was in my sophomore year of high school was, uh, we were doing multiculti literature, which normally means one thing my teacher, however, took that to mean that she could teach intersectional feminism for an entire year, essentially, uh, which was really fun because it meant that we got to read a lot of things about identity and how people tell stories and about representing yourself because there aren't other people. So, and I think that helped me because by the time I got into TTRPGs, it had been past that point and I had had that kind of thought put there like there isn't really other people always i live in uh, california in la which is giant and tons of other asians um but even so like that's not common i know and i i like i had to learn that in high school i had friends who were like oh yeah i've never had korean food before it's like you've never had korean food before wild and so it was a thing of like i guess if other if i want more people to know about my culture and my upbringing then there's i have to tell them um, I have to tell those stories because I mean, I'm my, like, I'm my mom. I said, she's half Asian. She's half Thai Chinese. There's not many Thai Chinese people in the U S uh, there's not many telling stories. I think last I counted, there were three Thai characters on main television, like main characters on television. And one of those shows just ended. Uh, they've, there's four major ones. They've been played by two actresses. So there's, those stories don't get told. And if I want, as I said, if I want people to know if, I don't want people to just be associating Thailand with these stereotypes and food that tastes unfamiliar and these weird hallmarks that I don't recognize, then I have to sit there and go, okay, well, how do I tell this? How do I sit down and tell this? And so I think that, I remember playing, I think I tried to switch to that fairly early on. I don't remember an exact point. I think it was just the slow playing at tables and frequently being one of like maybe two Asian people and never playing with any other Southeast Asians and definitely never any other Thai people until recently. Uh, like I literally just started playing at a table with another Thai person for the first time like a week ago. And I was like, whoa, there's another one. That's so weird. And that was, but that's also very fun to get to like, oh, there's another one. That's great. And, you know, I definitely felt that, you know, the contrast of being at, you know, the first time I was in a table with other Filipinos just blew my mind. Like, oh, this is what it feels like. It also made me feel really awkward because, uh, my Filipino was very awkward and I was not very good at it. Um, so I was the only one that was speaking a lot of English at the table. Um, so, you know, I totally understand that. Um, Pooja, tell us about th that experience for you, the intersection of personal gaming and representation of your culture. So one of the things that I've kind of found interesting is that because I am an, a pretty loud about it Indian streamer, 
I there's also that sense that I want to fight the expectation that I will only play Indian characters because uh, it's easy to get trapped into that. But, you know, at the same time, I'm here just like everybody else telling a fantasy story. I deserve to get to explore more than just my own background. And so where I have found I, I've made kind of some loose rules for myself, like I no longer play um, like every character I play, no matter what race they are, is going to be some sort of brown because I just think there need to be more brown faces, uh, even in art. And so, like, yeah, right. Like I played in Aladrin a few days ago for a charity stream, but even though uh, she was a winter Aladrin, she did not have like pale white skin. And luckily, I've never had a DM push back on that. And so I'm like, listen, it's fantasy. I can do what I want, and I will do what I want. And so that's that's been wonderful. So that's one thing that I will make sure because I do want my characters to, if not look like me, it look like my people. Uh, but other than that, I'm happy to like naming is easy. I usually like playing with all sorts of Indian names uh, because I think and I don't feel bad about it anymore. Everybody should learn to pronounce Indian names. So that that's a that's an easy give. But other than that, depending on the game, I will put some, like I think Theta mentioned before, like show diversity in the world. Like even if it's even my even if my character is an elf that grew up in the woods, they're gonna grow up in woods that are. Indian flavored. They're going to grow up in the woods where there's like, you know, more meditation, more gurus out there, things like that. Like I can still tell stories in fantasy with bits and pieces that are identifiable without having to represent the entirety of Indian culture at one time. And, you know, because I, I, what, what prompted me in that way is when I finally read the first when the first Miss Marvel came out and I can, I can identify very heavily with a lot of the things like I grew up in a Muslim culture, but I'm not Muslim. Uh, you know, I grew up a nerd. I grew up heavily online. I grew up very much not knowing how to fit into this, the circumstances around me. And I, the power that first comic book had on me and making me cry within five pages, I was just like, I want to be, I want other people to have that opportunity to see at least bits and pieces of themselves in no matter what setting we're playing with. Like, it, like mostly we play a lot of in fantasy. So there isn't like a very obvious, like I am from India and I'm a nerd, but Hey, I, I love that moment of like, Oh, Hey, I recognize that word or Hey, I recognize that concept. And that's just so powerful and magical and bonds you in that moment that I want to tell those stories. And uh, like Theta was saying, I have had the privilege very recently of being able to play with another Indian person. I've played in a couple of games with KP and it's it's chaotic and magical mm -hmm. and I it's something that everyone needs, I think, like just just being able to tell relate on a different level, tell these stories together. And yes, some people are like, why does everybody from the same culture have to be related? But KP and I particularly love that because we love playing siblings who um, needle each other. But I, I, I see good. that. It's I've so good. That so yeah. good. It's... The two of you together is magic. You were on... Yeah. Um, siblings are perfect. So like... Um, um, troopers, troopers Fate game yes that one yes. time i was like Mwah. you and so in, magic. in that game i got to play the shitster who harassed kp's <laughs> character but on like a regular wednesday other every other wednesday campaign um he plays a character that constantly gets under my skin and it's like i love telling like once again as a, as a storyteller you love playing dynamics you love playing family but playing family with someone who even though we're from very different parts of india we speak very different languages we found so much to relate to that we can bring that onto screen and having that authentic connection, I think tell leads to beautiful stories. Great. Last but not least, Kappa, give us your thoughts. Uh, so, oh man. Okay. Um, God, like I, I was just enamored with Pooja and Theta. Your stories <laughs> are, are great and amazing. Um, and just getting lost. So I, I, I was trying to think about how I, uh, engage with with this you know representation and being the person that represents everything and looking back and like having a re retrospective a lot of my decisions in my representation is 
is to stand in defiance of what is already out there. Dungeons and Dragons specifically, but as a result, most TTRPGs follow the framework that has been set by Tolkien and, and, and you know, other, other you know, uh, uh, fantasy fiction writers. Uh, but those stories are deeply rooted and almost basically exclusively set in in european backgrounds and histories and all that and when there is a person of color it's because they are the enemy and they are uh bad people and should should shouldn't be considered as as uh human and so i talked about this in the villain panel yesterday when i which was great thank you thank you thank you uh so when when i think about um a character who is evil or who is bad or stands in opposition to the party i think about how can i represent this uh this person how can i play this person how can i be uh this person without leaning into those stereotypes and it's a small little challenge room but it's a challenge that i want to take on because i want to show that you can tell stories you can tell you can have uh characters that aren't stereotypical that aren't racist that aren't Uh, that don't lean on your the don't lean on the ways that they are represented in media and have been represented in media and still make it so interesting and so uh complex and full and and you end up loving these characters um whether they are good or bad um uh and so that's where that that's that that's kind of where i sit it's mostly in anger and defiance Spite no, is a very I, powerful, oh, powerful motivator. Spite, spite, spite. I, I got through high school. I love it, Kappa. I love that. And you know, for me, I have learned a lot in this, like last fifty minutes, from each and every single one of you, yeah. and your, like, very distinctly different and yet like similar perspectives. You know, and. It has been such a privilege for me to listen and learn from all of you. And um, yeah, I mean, I had another talking point, but I was like, we were going to end up here for like another hour and we need to, we need to go places and have more conversations. Mm -hmm. Uh, So um, what I would like to do now is just have you all do an outro tell people who you are where to find you and also just like a couple of things like you know what you want people to take away from this conversation yeah um theta you go you first hi i'm theta as i said i use they them pronouns you can find me on twitter uh at jobu underscore the you can also find me on itch.io under that name i make games why i like telling stories just gotta tell more stories i guess um i think if one thing i could tell people to take away it would be that it doesn't if you if you're another diasporic or mixed asian or whatever and you are worried about your characters or your world not being asian enough or not being represented enough like screw that it's enough you're you're doing fine literally like it's you it's your background anyone who tells you otherwise screw them and mm-hmm. if somebody ever sends you hate tell them go screw yourself as well because like Just send them to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> like a Kappa, great stern then. face i will I don't know. Laugh at them. I don't know. I can do. I can laugh at them at minimum. I can just laugh at them a lot. Um, but like, right? That's you're lovely. Doing enough. Uh, Kappa, who are you? Where can we find you? And you know, what do you want people to take away from this conversation? Yeah. yeah uh, hello. Uh, my name is Christian, better known as Kappa in most online spaces. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Kappa Chris. I post updates on whatever I'm up to and what, what projects I'm doing. Um, just to, to to keep things short but one thing i do want to plug is the rest of role for solidarity we had some amazing panels yesterday from uh transplanter in particular i referenced the villain uh villains panel where we go into a lot of the stuff that we talked about here in a little bit more detail over there um 
So if you like the conversation today, go find that VOD uh, on trans transplanter RPG and listen to that conversation because a lot of what we are talking about here is relevant in that conversation as well. Um, as to uh, for 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 stuff to take away from here, I mean, love yourself, love love who you are, love your identities because you are one. Like we talked about this again in the pre-show, you are one hundred percent of your identities. You're not half of one thing or part of another. You are you. So show that love, like celebrate that, show that love. Um, there are wonderful people out there that are, wa that want to celebrate that with you through TTRPG, through storytelling, through video games, through whatever, um, just mute your mic, say something, um, <laughs> tweet at me. I'll, I'll, I, I want to uplift you. So I'll, I'll retweet whatever, um, that's me. Excellent. And Pooja, who are you? Where can we find you? And what do you want people to take away from this conversation? Hey folks, I continue to be Pooja. You can find me on Twitter at Pooja. And in my bio, there's a card link which has all of my streaming schedule. So that's probably the easiest way because some of the links get a little confusing. Um, but as far as takeaways go, um, similar to what Theta and Kappa said, as far if you are a member of a diaspora of a culture that is not the one you live in and that makes you hesitate to tell your story because you're worried about representing it. Just remember, we don't expect a white person to represent all white people. It is not fair for you to expect yourself to represent all of your people either. You're representing yourself. You're representing your own stories. And once again, if anyone gives you grief for it, uh, just remind them that what ask them why their expectations for you are different than anybody else. And as far as um, non non people of color, uh, white people who are helping tell these stories, like work with your your players, your DM, help them feel comfortable to tell these stories and you yes. know, assure them that they do not have the pressure of representing their entire culture and it's okay and it's safe and you will you will try to tell the best story that you can together because that goes a long way. And once again, active allyship is a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And I am Anne, your moderator. You can find me at XO underscore girl wonder. And I think what I envisioned for this panel and what I want everybody who's out there watching to take away from this is that if you take the time to listen and really listen to, uh, you know, to others, you know, it will simply just enrich your own life and your own stories. So, you know, participate in the conversations, but really listen, because that is what will make your life better. It'll make everyone else's life better. Uh, so for those of you out there watching, thank you for listening. We're going to go and raid um, Transplanter RPG into their panel next, because there's going to be more conversations and more listening, and we're going to learn from each other, because that is the theme this weekend. And uh, yeah, e Today, hang out tomorrow, on, yeah, hang goals. out on Transplanter <laughs> RPG, and also um, tonight, but also tomorrow, there's a whole other set of um, streams, events, panels, games, things happening. So, I'm you know, yeah, y'all showed up for the first, you know, start off like let's finish strong tomorrow everyone hey. so um yeah um that's it thank you very much and if, you know if you are inclined to donate exclamation mark donate please every dollar counts and mwah, goodbye Bye. thank you